The goal of this tutorial is to show you how to set up the development environment and execute your first application on a simple link CC3220S or CC3220SF launchpad. We'll be doing this in two different integrated development environments, Code Composer Studio, which I'll be referring to as CCS, and IAR Embedded Workbench, which I'll be referring to as IAR. Code Composer Studio is a free tool provided by TI. To use IAR, the user will need to purchase a license to use the full feature version. This tutorial assumes that the license has already been acquired. At the end of this tutorial, you should understand the basic networking capabilities which the 3220 device provides, know where to download the required software for 3220 development, create a new project and flash an image using the UniFlash Image Creator tool, and modify, rebuild, and execute the reference application from the debugger. It is important to understand the content of the reference application which is used for this tutorial. The demo application is built as a shell command prompt and provides Wi-Fi capabilities like connect, disconnect, and scan, socket capabilities for UDP or TCP client and servers, network application capabilities like ping and MDNS, and transceiver mode which gives the user a direct interface to the radio layer. Before we proceed, the following hardware should be acquired a CC3220S or SF launchpad, and an 802.11 B, G, or N wireless access point. An internet connection is not mandatory. We will also need one micro USB cable and a PC running at least Microsoft Windows 7 with wireless capabilities. For software, we will need the latest CC3220 SDK, CCS or IAR, UniFlash, XDS drivers, which should be installed as part of the SDK, the latest CC3220 service pack, a serial terminal emulator application such as TerraTerm, and a socket utility application such as Socket Test or iPerf. The software components mentioned in the previous slide can be obtained from these links. This tutorial assumes that these packages are installed at their default location. To make sure that the XDS drivers are installed properly, connect the CC3220 launchpad to this PC using the micro USB cable, open the Device Manager, and the XDS ports should appear under Ports. Now we will create a new project, update the service pack, and program it to the launchpad. Connect the launchpad to the PC using the micro USB cable. Launch UniFlash and then select the CC3120 slash CC3220 device and click the Start Image Creator button. Select New Project and enter a project name. Choose CC3220 for the CC3220S launchpad and CC3220SF for the SF launchpad. Select device mode as develop when working from the debugger. Production mode locks the device from debugging. In development mode, you can also flash the application as part of the image and execute it. Click create project and then click connect on the right side of the screen to connect to the board. If the connection is successful, you'll see the device information appear on the right side of the page. On the left side of the page, click Service Pack to bring up the Service Pack Selection dialog. Click Browse and navigate to the Service Pack directory to select the binary. The Service Pack can be found in the SDK itself under the Tools, CC32XX Tools, Service Pack directory. Now click the Generate Image button on the right side of the page to enter the programming page. Click the Center Program Image button to create the image and flash it. This operation may take a while to complete. Once the process is finished, a confirmation dialog should appear. As we are working with the debugger, you should be sure that when debugging secure devices, such as the S or SF launchpads, the device should be formatted in development mode to enable the JTAG connectivity. This can be done in UniFlash, as shown. If you would like to also flash the demo application binary so the application is executed upon device reset, see the CC3220 Getting Started Guide app note. Let's move on to the download and installations of IDEs. Download CCS version 7.1 or later. You can do this from TI's website. When running the installer, please use the default directory of CTI to follow along with this video and other trainings. During the installation process, when you are prompted to select the processor support, select SimpleLink CC3X Wireless MCUs. You can select additional options as needed. Click Next, be sure that TI XDS Debug Probe Support is already selected, and proceed with the installation. Please note that the installation may take a while to complete depending on the number of selections and your network speed. Once installation is finished, start CCS and you'll be prompted to choose your workspace folder where all your project files will reside. 
Launch a serial connection application. We are using TerraTerm throughout this tutorial, but any terminal emulation can be used. Go to File, New Connection, select Serial, and select the port that says XDS110 Class Application slash User UART, and click OK. Go to Setup Serial Port, change the baud rate to 115 200, and keep the rest of the settings as shown. You can also save this configuration in TerraTerm. To do so, go to Setup, Save Setup, and overwrite the initialization file. This will make the configuration as the default. In CCS, import the Network Terminal Demo application to the workspace. Click on Project, go to Import CCS Projects, and browse the location of the SDK installation. Code Composer Studio will list all the projects inside the directory and its subdirectories. Select the Network Terminal project for your CC3220S or SF device and OS flavor. Click Finish and rebuild the project. When importing a demo project, an OS library project is also automatically imported. Building the demo project builds the OS project. Open a terminal and set its parameters, then click on the green bug icon in the top menu to start debugging. Once the debug session starts, click the green arrow in the debug menu to start executing your code. Now go back to the terminal window. As the application is executing, you can see the available commands being printed and a shell prompt. Next, we're moving on to IAR. Download IAR Embedded Workbench version 7.80.1 or later for ARM. You can download this from IAR's official website. During installation, be sure to select TIXDS as one of the debug probe drivers. You will be prompted to install multiple additional software and drivers. Please follow the instructions to finish installation. Finally, if your version does not support CC3220 devices, we will need to add a patch provided in the SDK. It is located under your SDK install directory, Tools, CC32XX Tools, IAR Patch. Copy the content of this folder into the IAR installation directory slash arm slash config. Click to merge the folders with existing ones when prompted. Once IAR is installed and licensed, we are ready to work with our first project. First, configure the environment variables. Browse to Tools, configure custom argument variables, Go to the Global tab and click Import. Choose the custom argvars file located in your SDK slash tools slash IAR and restart IAR. Second, build the kernel. You will have to adjust a few locations. In your SDK, you will find the imports.make file. Edit this file and verify that the IAR ARM compiler path matches your PC setup. You can also check the other compilers for CCS and GCC. In order to compile the OS projects, you will have to run the makefile located under the SDK slash kernel by gmake, which is part of the XDC tools installed with the SDK. Next, import the network terminal demo application to the workspace. Create a new empty project by going into Project, Create New Project, then choose the ARM toolchain. Choose an empty project and click OK. Browse to the location where you want to save this project and save as a file name. Choose Help, IAR Information Center for ARM, choose Integrated Solutions, and then scroll down and choose Texas Instruments Example Projects. Click on the Example Applications link. This link refers to the Example Root link in your argvars. Click on an example according to the type of device and OS flavor. All project files should be imported to the workspace. Save the workspace and rebuild the project. In order to create a binary image, in addition to the .out file, a post-build step is also required. To do that, right-click the project and choose Options. On the Output Converter tab, mark the Generate Additional Output checkbox and change the output format to binary. Recompile and the binary should reside in debug slash x. To start the debug session, select Project Options from the menu and select the debugger category. In the Setup tab, choose TIXDS as the driver and click OK. Go to the TIXDS category, choose TIXDS110 emulator as the emulator, and JTAG4PIN as the interface. In case you are working with the CC3220SF device, check the Use Flash Loaders checkbox in the Debugger Download tab. Lastly, start debugging by clicking the green arrow on the top to start the debugger. Now go back to the terminal window. You can see the available commands and a shell prompt. There are many networking capabilities in this demo. As an example, we provide a basic Wi-Fi and socket communication. All you need is a CC3220 launchpad and a PC to connect to an AP, and any socket utility installed on the PC.
Scan for Wi-Fi networks and connect your launchpad and PC to the same AP. See that the launchpad will ping the PC. Set the PC as a TCP server and the launchpad as a TCP client and send 500 packets. Follow the shell commands as shown. You will see that sent 500 packets successfully should appear on the terminal and on the PC.